egg on the third Targaryen's 16th name day was drawing near, with the realm finally at some kind of fragile peace and spring in full flower, even in the far north of Westeros. Lord Toromandeli, the newly appointed Hand of the King, decided that King Aegon and his young Queen Daenerys should for the first time during his reign leave King's Landing and make a royal progress to mark his coming of age and thus the end of his regency. It would be good for the boy to see the never-ending lands he ruled over, the Hand reasoned, to show himself to his people and that the House of the Dragon was still a strong force, even after all the damage the Dance of the Dragons had caused. Aegon was tall and comely, with many saying he and Prince Viserys bore a striking resemblance of their late parents, Rhaenyra Targaryen and Daemon Targaryen. His sweet young queen, Daenerys Valarian, would supply whatever charm the king might lack. The commons would surely love her, which could only be a benefit to the solemn young king, who had taken to his isolation once again after the events of the plot to assassinate him and place Prince Viserys and Lyra Release on the Iron Throne. King Aegon's new council also concurred with Hand and the Lord Protector. Meticulous plans were made for the grand progress, lasting a full year. There had not been a progress on this scale since the time of Jaehaerys, the conciliator, and good Queen Alysanne, whose progresses had gone down in history as perhaps the best. This progress would take his grace to parts of the realm that had never seen a king before. The regions felt it was important for all to see their king and see him as a strong ruler to quell any thoughts of dissent. From King's Landing, they would ride to Duskendale and Maidenpool, and thereence take a ship for Goldtown in the Vale of Arran. After a visit to the home of House Arran, the Eyrie, they would return to Goldtown and sail for the north, with stops at the islands of the Three Sisters, which had not seen a king since the time of Aegon the Conqueror. White Harbour would give the king and queen a welcome such as they had never seen, Lord Manderley promised, with it being his own seat of power. From White Harbour, the only real true city in the north, the king and the queen would then continue up the White Knife River before moving overland to the heart of the north, the home of House Stark, Winterfell. It was even suggested they extend their trip further north and perhaps even visit the Wall and the men of the Night's Watch. There was also some talk of the king visiting some even more remote places within the north before he returned south, places no other king had been before. The mountain clans were discussed, but most places put forward for consideration were much larger in scale. Places such as Barrowton and House Dustin, or even the Dreadfort, the seat of House Bolton. Regardless of the plan, it was felt that the north deserved special attention, with the feeling being that prior royal progresses favoured places such as the Riverlands, the Westerlands and the Reach. However, the North presented logistical challenges, but there were ones the Lord Hand, Torrin Mandeli, were willing to try and overcome. Once they were finished in the North, the progress would turn south and down the King's Road to the Neck. If possible, Lord Mandeli wanted the King to visit Greywater Watch and the Cranog men of House Reed, but once in the Riverlands proper, the Lady of the Twins, Sabah for Frey, would host them with a grand feast spanning both of House Frey's twin castles. Given the important role of House Blackwood during the Dance of the Dragons, they would also call upon Lord Benjicott Blackwood at Raven Tree Hall. And of course, if they visited the Blackwoods, they would need to spend the exact same amount of time with the Brackens, or face a needless conflict between these two houses. A few nights would be spent at River Run, and they would then cross over the hills into the Westerlands and visit Lady Joanna Lannister at Casterly Rock, places such as Lannisport and Fair Isle and even Castamere were also put on the table for consideration. From Castley Rock, it would be down the sea road to the Reach, and the grandeur of High Garden, Golden Grove and Old Oak. It was said that the dragon in Silverwing had made her nest at Red Lake, after the bloody battle at Templeton, during the Dance of the Dragons. At this time, Silverwing was one of the very few remaining dragons left in the world, and among the largest. King Aegon would not like that given his deep hatred of dragons, but Red Lake itself was easily avoidable. It was also suggested that they visit one of Unwin Peak's seats, as it might help assage the former hand somewhat. However, some of the Regency Council feared Unwin was still plotting to bring down the king. At Old Town, the High Septum himself could no doubt be persuaded to give the king and queen his blessing. Lord Lionel Hightower and Lady Sam would welcome the chance to show their king the splendour of their city far outshone those of King's Landing, with the likes of the Hightower, the Citadel and the Starry Sept. The Stormlands were not forgotten. 
However, given the practical nature of the progress, it made sense for the procession to first head to the far south in Old Town, then travel through the Stormlands on their way home to King's Landing. There was some talk, albeit brief talk, of King Aegon taking a ship from Old Town, perhaps under the command of Alan Valarian, and visiting the Princess of Dawn, Alejandra Martel. However, it was felt that given the troubled relationship between Dawn and the Seven Kingdoms, sending the king into the heart of Dawn might not be the safest option. Some also rightly pointed out that the king travelling to Sunspear would send out the wrong message in impression, and that an invitation should instead be sent out to Princess Alejandra to come to the festivities in Old Town. One place excluded altogether from the tour was the Iron Islands. While in an ideal world, the king visiting the islands would do much to bring them closer to the mainland, given how recent Lord Dalton Greyjoy's plundering and war in the Westerlands was, it was felt that this objective needed to be saved for a future time. It would be a progress as such the realm had not seen in more than a century, Grandmaster Monkin told the king, when trying to drum up some enthusiasm with the young man. Spring is a time for new beginnings and fresh starts, sire, and this will mark the true beginning of your reign and the end of your regency. From the Dornish marches to the wall, all will know you for their king and Daenerys for their queen, and you will also get to know the entirety of your kingdom and people. The Hand, Toromandli, agreed as he would, given that the progress was his idea and he had put weeks of work into its preparation. It will do the lad some good to get out of this bloody castle, out of this wretched excuse for a city, he declared. In Mushroom's hearing, he can hunt and hawk, climb a mountain or two, fish for salmon in the white knife, see the wall, feast every night. It would not harm the boy to put some flesh on those spindly bones of his. Let him try some good northern ale, so thick you could cut it with a sword. The king needs this progress as much as the realm needs it. This royal progress will help turn this frail, weak boy king into the man the realm expects and needs him to be. One his ancestors would be proud of to call king. 